this is a good scripture for many people who are, who are either familiar with the Bible, you're a Christian, etc. Now, the purpose of this video is talking about, obviously, diversification when it comes to investing. For most men, it is very important that you are invested in something, whether you have a business or you're invested into, for example, maybe wines. I talked about that in one of my previous videos that I was getting involved um, with this app called Vinovest that does wine investing. For people who want to invest in wine, it gives you another way instead of having a refrigerator and storing all these different wines and then going out there and being a wine connoisseur, although that is a route. If you still wanted to get involved in wines, there's multiple ways to do it. And so I checked out that website, Vino Vest, and I, I said to myself, self, we're going to put a thousand bucks a month. Or we'll put a thousand bucks a month for the next six months, and we'll see how it's going. And of course, I'm going to track it. Now, this discussion is not just about um, Vino Vest, but it's, it's really about the principles that are often laid out in the Bible that many of you people have long forgotten long ago our ancestors basically laid the groundwork for many important things for us to keep into consideration and ecclesiastes eleven six is what just one of those things now for those especially we're talking about men who's responsible for sharing the load when it comes to providing for the family the bible says this and this is from uh it's either i forget if it's from solomon or it's from i think it's from i think it's the words of solomon in the book of Ecclesiastes. And Ecclesiastes is a reference to the congregator. That was the point. So Solomon was the great congregator, and so was David, but this is the role of those who were leaders who were to express words of wisdom. And so in essence, they would congregate, they would gather the people, and then give them words of wisdom for them to keep in mind from day to day. And of course, these were written down as the apostle had Paul had said for your instruction later on. Uh, in the Christian Greek scriptures, but it goes on to say in Ecclesiastes 11.6 where it says, Sow your seed in the morning and do not rest your hand in the evening, for you do not know which will succeed, whether this or that, or if both will equally prosper. Now, of course, to a community who primarily, primarily at that time, they were an agricultural community. And so, of course, it's a very good illustration about sowing seed, right? You're out there, you're spreading seeds. Uh, all over the ground and is basically planting seeds and Solomon goes on to say you know don't just do it in the morning he says and do not rest your hand in the evening meaning it's an all-day process when it comes to sowing seeds for reaping right maybe you're sowing seeds in a business maybe you're paying attention to the stock market maybe you like cryptocurrencies maybe you're paying attention to real estate and you're looking for different opportunities to branch out but this also talks about the business of in essence being diversified as the latter part of the scripture that says because you don't know maybe one will succeed maybe you'll put out a couple of different prospects you'll have a few different stock pick stock picks maybe you'll buy different types of real estate and you're not sure which one will really have the real success and this talks about being diversified because you don't know well maybe this particular stock will do well this one will do okay this one might do so great this one might stay flat or whether all of it will prosper. And this is basically the point about being diversified. Whether you have a YouTube channel, maybe you have a nine to five and you have a YouTube channel, plus you have a side hustle, or maybe you do, um, you know, you have a, your regular nine to five, or maybe you work a 12 hour shift like I do. I still, I still continue to work as an independent nurse and I do 12 hour shifts. And sometimes I'll do, I do typically do contract work, and that's basically how I'm able to negotiate my salary, which is why I never really liked being an employee, because um, most of my younger years I spent either in my own business that I started from 17, or when I worked for someone as a contractor, and I was able to negotiate based off of uh, basically how I sowed seed. If I did really good work, well, then I, I reaped the results. This is basically the point uh, for today, talking about that. Well, of course, we're talking about a little bit about Bitcoin. I am invested both in Bitcoin as well as Ethereum Classic. For those who are watching or have been watching Bitcoin, I do pay attention to price levels because I've been trading for the better part of about 22 years. And so as you can see, just looking at the chart, Bitcoin is still holding its 30,000 base. As you can see, there's a base over here. 30,000 is basically uh, your support. We did see a breach, but it was quickly bought up, even though there was a lot of doom and gloom when Bitcoin intraday had broken 30,000, came all the way down to like 28 and change. But at the end of the day, 
the buyer stepped in and bought it up, showing that there are still people buying it, as they say, on the dip. Now, Bitcoin still still trading below its 200 day moving average, which is still in the bearish territory, but it, it, it is holding its base, which is why most of my buys, I put them in at 31, 32, 33, etc. So that I'm at least capturing some of those lower prices instead of buying it when it moves up, as you can see, to 35, 36, 37. And of course, we do have quite a bit of a, of a wider range, and this will happen over time. It will take some time for Bitcoin to recover, despite the news of places like, for example, El Salvador um, trying to utilize Bitcoin for their country. And people, and you know, young people don't necessarily have the understanding. A country does not want to lose control of its currency. And obviously, at first for life living here in the city, obviously. For, for a country, would you want to see, if you were holding a, as a country, Bitcoin, would you want to see this huge level amount of loss in the value of your currency literally over a couple of days? Of course not. Now, El Salvador, the reason what, what people don't understand is that El Salvador does not have its own currency. So it's, they, they already don't have control to begin with. So them accepting Bitcoin not really all that important and all it does is actually put more regulations you don't want more regulations you want less regulations now of course cryptocurrencies can be very risky it's a high risk asset asset which is why most people who talk about bitcoin like it so much because it has these huge swings to the upside but it also has huge swings to the downside as you can see from the chart just looking at it but Really, just the point of this was just paying attention to levels, knowing where to buy. I typically always try, even I'm, I'm a patient investor, and I typically put my buys at the areas of support. And so just talking a bit about Bitcoin, if I was buying, which I am a buyer of Bitcoin, I put my buys as close to the support as possible. Now, there is a mini support that you should be able to see right here at 34,000. You should be able to see for the most part of it looking looking at the chart as follows, right? You should be able to see these are Chinese candlesticks and you can see where the candlesticks basically stop at about 34,000. That's where Bitcoin uh, for the most part has been trading when it's been pulled back to the downside. And that's what you should pay attention to. You want to pay attention to a breach of 30,000, which means I'd stop buying and wait for an uh, wait for an opportunity to see are we going to have another mini support area of support or is bitcoin going to keep trading to the downside at which point i stop buying i wait for i wait for it in essence to level out like you can see the chart has been for quite some time and then i put my buys either at the area of support or slightly below it so that i'm capturing the cheapest prices you should always be worrying about getting whatever it is that you invest in at the best possible price that you can another one that i've been investing is ethereum classic now ethereum classic despite the pullback is actually still in bull territory even though we had a huge pullback we're still trading above the 200 day holding a previous support of about 30 and as you can see we are rallying and punching through the area of resistance which is 50. we punched through area we punched through 50 and so I have been buying all along down here. I was buying into the 30 and you don't have to put a lot, whatever it is that you're willing to lose. You have to be willing to lose everything when it comes to these sort of sort of an investments. Some people might get rich. They basically put their house up for mortgage and and as they say, uh, they shoot for the fence. I've never invested that way. I've always been a diverse investor and I'm very careful about risk because the number one point of investing is don't lose your principal. You lose all your money what the hell are you going to do after that right you've got no money to invest with so i always i always invest very i'm always very diverse and so as you can see um, ethereum classic is in bullish territory still trading above the 200 and making moves to the upside we're up 20 percent. so if you were if you were down here buying even though it's down if you were actually down here buying and you were buying into the 30s you would have made 50 percent on your money and so even though some people might look at bitcoin or look at cryptocurrencies and say, you know, it obviously does have no intrinsic value. There's no argument about that, but it doesn't mean that there isn't money to be made. And that's that's the, that's the thing that's important. As, and that what you what I keep into consideration is that despite there is no intrinsic value to any of these things, for the most part, it's not like gold where I can 
sell a gold coin or the gold that is utilized, for example, in phones and wiring, etc. Right? You could make a home and you could build a gold statue. You can use gold plating. So gold has multiple uses. Hence, it has intrinsic value. Like for example, silver, copper, etc. Right? You can utilize them for mining. You can you know, they're they're mined, they're pulled out of the ground, and they're used for multiple purposes outside of just using it as an exchange. Uh, as a currency exchange, or at least it was previously. That's basically going to be the gist of this of this one. I did want to do a little bit of an update on my Vino Vest. I've currently put in, like I said, I was going to put two thousand uh, a month, and I've hit the two thousand dollar mark, as you can see here. And we're currently up forty seven dollars and twenty seven cents on that. Not too shabby. I'm going to be putting a little, putting in a little bit more. I might uh, uh, pre uh, aggressively invest maybe. 1500 a month or 2000 a month and see where it goes the primary reason again i don't know what will have what will be successful maybe i'll do fantastic in investing in wine wine is of course is going to be moving higher especially if you know the environment in which you live in right women love wine more women spend more time alone and unfortunately it does lead to heavy wine drinking but also in america you have to pay attention to you have to pay attention to what the elites do. The elites often like to drip a lot of the pleasures of life into the hands of the common people. And then once they get a taste for it, then they they want more of it. And it, it starts to become a common way for many of these individuals that they basically work and give their all to obtain some of these luxuries, which is why you see even people who are poor talking about things like Birkin bags, you know, Versace, you know, Rolexes, you got guys that are maybe making a few hundred thousand that are making these ridiculous sort of uh, purchases. And it's primarily because one, you always have to keep in mind that we live in a consumer economy. And so when it comes to investing, I try to be as diverse as possible, but also keep in mind the words of the Bible. Sow your seed in the morning. Do not rest your hands in the evening, for you do not know which will succeed, whether this or that or if both will pro or if both will equally prosper thanks for watching of course feel free to like comment and subscribe